Welcome to Reddit Real Estate Disasters. I'm Jen Sylvester and my co-host, Jackie Baker. Hello. And, uh, what's happening, Jackie? What's going on, Jen? Oh, not much. Not much. Just uh, just hanging in the wind here with the crazy weather and all that. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. It's been an interesting, uh, it's been an interesting week. Uh, yeah. We've had like tornadoes down your oh. way. Right, not tornadoes, earthquakes. We had the earthquakes last oh. week. Eclipse happened on Monday. On Monday, and then and crazy weather. Did you get that crazy rain? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I was down in Delaware for a few days, and then just came up here to Jersey today. And it's like the rain followed me. It's like it was it was horrible down in Delaware last night, and then the rain. Like, what the heck's going on? We had thunderstorms this afternoon, and then oh, speaking of the earthquake. Did you know after that earthquake on in Jersey um, last week there were forty seven aftershocks? What? Yes, forty seven aftershocks. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't feel any of them myself, but people felt them all over the state. That's crazy, isn't that that's, nuts? That's bonkers. That's bonkers. We're, we're becoming California. So anyway. I can't even imagine. I can't. I can't even imagine. Yeah. No, I, we we barely felt it up here. Up in up in Massachusetts. Yeah, I mean, well, ooh. I felt it. I but, felt that uh, earthquake. Uh huh. Felt like I was sitting in one of those cheap massage chairs. Yeah. <laughs> like oh. Yeah. Like right. I, at first, I'm like, "What the heck?" And then I'm like, "Oh, this is nice." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm How like, did chair turn into a massage chair. That's where crazy. Put, where do I put the fifty cents? Yeah. Let's go again. Yeah. So, it's my friend. Crazy. Anyhow, anyhow, we're on uh, episode four. Are we on this uh, on this illustrious podcast, and uh, wow. for, for those that are listening, um, Jackie's gonna Jackie's got some some juicy some juicy Reddit stories, some th things that are handpicked somewhere in the realm of real estate homeownership, somewhat there on Reddit. Uh, all those uh, interesting people that are on Reddit posting those stories, and mm -hmm. uh, she hasn't told me anything about them, so I know nothing about them. So she's gonna she's gonna read them. And then uh, it's gonna we're gonna talk about it. So like, uh, right. so the listeners like uh, it's like eavesdropping and it's like we're having a, a cup of coffee, as you guys all say down in Jersey. Yes, coffee, and and we're just chatting about these these uh, crazy situations and yeah, and uh, somebody's uh, just eavesdropping. Yes, <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate you all being here. So Jen, this has been a very active week on Reddit on real estate stuff. So there was a whole array of, of stories. I was there like, was an oh. eclipse, you know. What's and, that? And there was an eclipse and there was a full moon there you on go. that day. So of course there's craziness. It was a lot of reason. So yeah. So let's get into the story. So the first one I have, it's um it's called so this one, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so this one's interesting. This is this has to do when uh, when you find out when you buy a house at the um person died. Someone died in the house. So cool. here we go. Found out three people have died in the home. I am currently under contract for, I'm not sure what to do. Long story short, my husband and I found a house that is perfect for us. We're expecting our first child and have been in the market for a house to accommodate us currently living in a 700 square foot home, a large dog, plus family that will be coming to stay to help care for the baby for the first few months. Here's the catch. We're currently still under the inspection period for our home. We spoke to two different neighbors in the area who told us the elderly dad died in the home many years ago, followed by the elderly mother last year, all from natural causes. However, it doesn't end there. Their middle-aged daughter, who supposedly has psychiatric issues, was staying in the home after her mother's death and either overdosed or unalived herself with prescription pills. She was discovered one week later by one of the neighbors cutting the grass after smelling a foul odor from oh. the side window. The house, is sim the house has since been bought by an investor who has completely redone the inside of the home. Everything is new. The market in our area is extremely competitive. The neighborhood is excellent, very family friendly. I wouldn't say we're getting the house at a steal, but it's definitely cheaper than other homes in the area. It's been difficult to find something that checks off our boxes until we found this home. However, I'm not sure how I feel about the house's history. My husband is 
my husband is for continuing to go along with the contract. He is unfazed by the neighbor's updates. I'm more hesitant. We both work in healthcare and have seen death almost daily, but I still feel weirded out. Am I overreacting? So here's the thing. Now, do you, do you believe in ghosts, Jackie? Do I believe in ghosts? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. And but hauntings and all, oh, yeah. the, all I the such. Listen, I wasn't thinking that, but here's, it's just, it's interesting because I know, I don't know how the law is in Massachusetts, but in Jersey, you don't have to disclose if somebody died in your house. Well, unless you're asked, if somebody asked you, then you say, yeah, somebody did, but you don't have to, sellers don't have to disclose that. No, so it's the same way in Massachusetts. Yeah, okay. you don't have to. It's not like an automatic thing, like you know, a, a roof leaking or something. Then, then yeah, you got to tell right. them about it. But um, like a death, um, hauntings. Believe it or not, hauntings. You don't have to like any kind of you know mm -hmm. um, weird happenings and whatnot. You don't. That's not something that is required disclosure. However, if somebody does ask, then it becomes required. That, right. it, that they have to, right. you know, they have to talk they about it. To, but, um, yep. how do you feel about it? If you, how about, how would you feel about buying a house with, with that three people very recently, very close together time-wise yep. died. And one of them was like, not peaceful. So, right? so yeah, yeah. So I don't if, know about that, man. If I, okay. If it was me, if I was in her shoes in this market, I would move forward with that, buying a house. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put myself back out in the market again. If I found something, that's a decent house, a decent neighborhood. The prices are only going to go up. Interest rates are going up. Yep. I wouldn't put myself back out in the market again. I would go ahead and I would just, I would run, I would go with it. I understand her. Like she's creeped out by it, yeah. but the house was renovated. It was bought by an investor. They gutted the whole thing. Everything's new. So supposedly, Supposedly, we hope. I mean, there's still, it says there's still in the inspection period, but in today's market, I wouldn't I walk away from that. Yeah, it's a tough thing. The, you know, they have those. Um, I actually did. Oh uh, gosh, a couple years ago, I did an interview um, on my old YouTube channel with this woman that does like house tours, house haunting tours. Mm -hmm. And she talked about stuff, you know, that happens and, and she'll actually like go, I didn't even realize this was a thing. She, she says, I'll go into, if somebody's looking to buy a house and they're concerned about, you know, ghosts or spirits. beings or spirits yeah. or whatever. Yeah. She said she would actually go into the house for a fee and like, clear the place, you know, you know, make sure that there's nothing, there's nobody hanging around that shouldn't be there. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, uh, that would be, that would be, that would be my only thing I think is just like, you know, I don't want any, any creepiness. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, or, uh, or like you, or if you're Catholic, have a priest come in and bless the house. Yeah. Do something like that too. Yeah. I mean, you, could, you could, you can definitely do something like that. That's not a bad idea. So you just, you just reminded me our very first house we bought when we were first married. Um, the couple was getting a divorce and it was an ugly divorce, like bad. There was damage throughout the house from their fights, like holes in the walls, like broken banister. But we we're like, you know, we'll take it. We like the neighborhood. That's why yeah. we got it. And somebody made a comment because we were just married a year when we found the house and somebody's like, Oh, do you want to move into it? That's kind of bad luck. Don't you think the, you know, the family's getting divorced and you know, do you want to move into that? I'm like, yeah, I do. Because it's a new beginning. Like, you know, they're, it's out with, you know, they're moving well, on. Yeah, out. You're more pragmatic about it. Like you're, you're not, you're not worried about like, no. you know, anything transferring over. Or, right. Or like no bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, right. I like, I never like thought of it, but it's just funny. Somebody brought that up. They're like, don't you think that's bad luck? You know, you're like, this is such that's, an ugly that's, You know what? That's super interesting because, uh, when my then husband and I bought this house that I'm in now, um, it was a divorce. It was the same type of thing. It wasn't, I don't think it was a nasty divorce necessarily. Um, but it was definitely a divorce. Mm -hmm. We actually found a, a gun up in the attic <gasps> after we moved in. It was Ooh. a small one. It's like a, you know, like a right, a small rifle, like a 22 or something like that. But, uh, I was like, oh, 
not cool. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, Let's just get this out of here. You know what I mean? We'd have any kids at the time, yeah. but, uh, but you know what, when, when, to your point, when, uh, when we were looking, we were in a condo, it was our first place. And this was like a step up and it needed work and all the things. Mm -hmm. And it was like a fair price for what it was. And it didn't even cross my mind about yeah that kind of stuff. Cause it was right. like, well, that's them. And that's, right. that, that's, and, and we're, we're, we're us. I mean, I don't know that if I was this, this woman, I don't think I'd not buy, I don't think I'd, I'd stop. No, with, with the to be perfectly honest, I'd be more concerned about the rehab than I would the, the people that died. Yeah. No joke. Like, cause yeah. I mean, working with, with, uh, having seen the other side of that, of the fence in terms of, you know, I worked with banks for a couple of years and I would see like these post foreclosure properties and these investors would come in and, you know, air quotes, uh, rehab it. And it would be shoddy work. It would be mm -hmm. so, so shoddy. Oh, yeah. And it was like they would put, you know, it's like putting, you know, the old saying, you know, uh, rouge and, and lipstick on a pig is mm -hmm. still a pig, right? Yeah. Like, it may look nice, but then once you're in it, you're like, oh my God, is this, it's just not, you know? Right. Um, I think I'd be more concerned about that yeah. than anything. You know what I mean? Yep, definitely. I Especially agree. Especially if you. I mean, I mean, it's so it's I'm I'm sad for the 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 daughter. Um, but yeah. if there's any kind of mental illness, who knows what she I know. did or whatever, you know what I mean? Destructive to the house or whatever, and mm -hmm. cover it up. I don't know. Yeah, we had it, I just remembered of a story here in my town. Very, very sad story. There was a neighborhood in town, it's like these million dollar homes, and this family, the, the, they had a party. It was in the middle of summer and the wife wanted to go hang out and lounge by their pool. And there, it was an in-ground pool and in a shallow end, it had these like built-in lounge chairs that you can sit in and like you could sit in the water, right? Oh, in the shallow end. You know where I'm going with this. I know where you're going with this. So she drowned. So I guess she was drunk, passed out and just rolled into the water and she drowned. And that was like, Oh my God. That was like such a big story in our town. And then when it went on the market, we're like, Ooh, you know, <laughs> Chambers. but you know, it's just cause we all knew the story, you know what I mean? And yeah. then you're like, I don't know, would you want to buy that? But look, you know, it's, it happens, you know, as long as you drain the pool water. Cause it's got all like death in the pool water. And yeah. Stuff. Well, I'm sure they did all that. They <laughs> that out. But yeah. Like death germs. Yeah. Like death, death cooties, death yeah. cooties in the water. But, um, but that's look, just, it, it just, happens. It happens all the you time. Know, pools, you know, pools are, pools are a dangerous thing, you know? Oh yeah. Pools, you should have a license to have a pool just like you have a license to have a gun because they can be just as dangerous. Oh, they are. That's, <laughs> and that's why I would never get a pool. I would, I would never. No, no. No. It's just, I, well, no because you don't know who ends up in there. You, you know, somebody could like, you know, go. Well, you know, here's the thing. Them. So my, my, my parents, right. Were, are, are having all these renovations done in their house. Right. And they had, a um, they started the renovations and there was like a, a miscommunication with the contractor and the guys, they were doing their bathroom and the guys showed up to the house, the contractor guys showed up to the house to rent up to uh, demo the bathroom. And they went like right down to the studs. Right. So they started to do that. The only problem is, is the dumpster was delayed. The dumpster wasn't delivered. So they ended up, I mean, I personally, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have allowed this to happen, but I, don't, I wasn't there and well, you know, whatever, but they ended up piling this, all this debris. And we're talking like sheetrock with sheetrock, you know, screws and flooring and counter, all this crap is piled in a section next to their driveway, but it's like in the front of the house. And I said to my dad, I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's a huge liability. I mean, if you have a kid yeah. that is curious and comes on your property, he's, he's like, well, that's not my problem. He's not supposed to be on my property. I'm like, Oh, but it is, it is, it is it's your problem. Is. If somebody comes totally on your property, your problem. it doesn't matter if yep. they're supposed to be there or not. If they come on your property and they get hurt, guess what? Yeah. Like, you know, you're done. I, They'll sue you. They'll sue you. And they, yep. and, and you're liable. Something happens to that kid. He gets a, he gets, puts his foot through a, 
a nail and ends up getting, you know, he gets a, gets an infection, gets tetanus, whatever. And it's, and it's, you are on the hook. You are on the hook. And so pools Mm -hmm. are absolutely the same way. And it always like drives me crazy when I go, you know, go to a property, go for a showing or something. And the pool, like the gate is unlocked or something. I'm like, oh my, (laughs) do you not understand? Lawsuit lawsuit waiting to happen. It's a lawsuit waiting to happen. And everybody's lawsuit happy these days. I know. I know. know? Especially when like, you know, eggs cost 25 bucks a dozen. I know. Right. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. So, all right. So we both agree then she should move on buy the house. You'll get over it. Just more, be more worried about the builder who flipped that house. So totally. Yeah. I would be like scrutinizing that home inspection, like crazy. Yes. And, 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 and like, if necessary, uh, you know, having further inspections, if like the home inspector is not sure about stuff, like, I mean, they have all these cool gadgets where you can, you can see, have you seen those like moisture meters and stuff like that, where they can actually see through the yeah sea rock and all that stuff. Yep. So, um, that's what I would be doing, but no, I would, cool. I would not buy the house because people died. What a, what a cool story that would yes. be to tell. All right. So you ready for the next one? Sure. This is great. This Rock is I'm telling you, the, these stories are all like within the last like couple of days. Like I, I what is going on? <laughs> Full moon, man. Yeah. Eclipse. Telling you. The eclipse. Okay. Here's the title of this one. Seller is changing his mind six days before we close. Well, that sounds like fun. What? What? Okay. Yeah. All right. First time buyer here. And let me prephrase this, that the seller is out of the country and set up a trustee to manage all the paperwork. When we were negotiating, seller's real estate agent kept mentioning the seller needs a certain quota or proceed as the seller is retiring and not coming back. (sighs) Okay. One of the best quality of the house is that they recently put a new roof on in the last month or so. Anyway, the title company discovered that the roof is not paid for and it has a big balance. Of course, I'm not paying for that, but now because of the roof payment, the seller is not reaching this quota he has in mind. He wants to cancel the sale and doesn't want to sell anymore. Our realtor sent us to sign, our realtor sent us to sign a demand to close document. We signed it as we really like the house, but we were scared of what's the outcome. My wife and I are overthinking and we really, we don't really want to get sued or some legal battle. If anyone has an experience, I'd appreciate the help. Like why, why why would you, why would they be concerned about the seller suing them? I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe they wrote it weird. Cause that doesn't make it. I think they miss. Yeah. I think, you know, it is, I think English is their second language. So I think they wrote it. So maybe they, maybe they meant the other way around, but anyway, they're not going to yeah. get sued. They can sue them. They can well, sue the seller. Yeah. This, this, okay. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it right now. Situations like this sucks big mm-hmm. time for buyers. Okay. Right. Yep. Because you go to a real estate transaction and who puts the money for escrow? Buyer. Yep. Right. The mm-hmm. seller has no skin in the game. Right. The seller has no skin in the game. You do sign a contract. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. It's a legally binding contract. Right. However, it's a piece of paper. It's a piece mm-hmm. of paper. If the seller defaults, then the the deposit, well, the deposit goes back to the buyer. Right. But this buyer is not entitled to anything. Yes, the buyer can sue the seller, but at what cost? And this is the this is the thing that sucks about situations like this because you, you, the, the these poor buyers are getting backed into a corner. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it doesn't happen a ton, but it definitely happens. Right. I'm sure you've, I've seen it. I'm sure you've seen mm-hmm. it. Oh, and yeah. it, it's, it, it sucks because it's like, you know, most buyers, most, I did have a situation. I actually did a video about this, about, I mentioned this and I, there was a, an agent that had this exact situation. The buyers had a family member that was an attorney that was representing them for free. So they were able to sue and it didn't cost them any money. But that's mm. the reason why most buyers don't sue is because it costs them money, costs number them one. Money. And number right. two, this could tie the house up for 
months and months and months and months. And now what you're renting or whatever, and you're in limbo for an yep. indefinite amount of time. Yeah. And, and without a guaranteed outcome and, right. and it just, I know there's no, I mean, it's, it's, you know, if I was, if I was involved in this whole scenario, I would be working really hard to try to find, try to negotiate with the seller's agent and the seller, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. even if they met, I mean, it, it's not right. It is not right. No. But it's like the lesser of two evils, even if it's like they meet in the middle, like whatever the roof it cost, if they try, if they assume part of that cost or something like I mean, it, it, I, I guess the big thing that we don't know about this is how much that roof costs. Uh, yes, I know. I, right? Because if if you're talking like 25 grand, it's like, you know what? You walk away. Yeah. Because there's other houses. There's always going to be more houses. There's exactly. There's always going to be more houses. You walk um, away. But I'm re I am reading it. Yeah, it, like it doesn't give any 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 indication. But I mean, you figured the most maybe 25 unless it's like a massively big house, right? But um, here's the thing now, like the seller's all about his net, you know, what's, what's the bottom line? What's he walking away with? Right. Yep. Say he's like, you know what? I'm not making the money I wanted to make. I'm taking it off the market. He goes to put that back on the market. There's no guarantee he's going to get the price that he listed it at. Well, right? let's be honest. If he puts it back on the market six months later, depending on where he is in the country, True. it's probably going to be worth more. It could very well could be, but if he's smart, like, you know, take the proceed, you well, we can't pay the balance off of that roof because it's going to come up again. Do you know what happens when you assume that you're, uh, he's, he's, you're assuming he's smart and you know what happens when, when you assume Jackie, Come I know. On. Remember I know. this from old grade school? Yes. I'm making I know. a mess out of you and me. I know, so. Jen. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and common sense. Yeah. Would tell you that this is what the seller would think, but common sense is not so common. So those yeah. are my two, those are my two uh, quotes for the day. I'm done. Okay, good. I'm out. I'm I just, like, okay, screen. good. See you I won't ask for any more. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you're, you've got an unreasonable situation and we're like, Hey, if we get the seller to be reasonable, he's not going to be reasonable. If he's even asking the question. Yeah. The guy's an ass. Yeah. But he's plain, an idiot. But English, like the guy's an ass. If he's even asking the question, there's no way that this guy's going to backpedal and be like, oh, you know what? I feel bad. I'm sorry. You know what? I will pay for it. No. Yeah. He's not. He's a, he's an unreasonable jerk. And well, I don't know. I'd, the, I'd walk away. The oh. problem. Right. Because the problem is, and I've seen this before, when people sell their house and they're banking on that money to pay for something specific. Like I need to net $400,000 because I have to pay, you know, for whatever the assisted living place that I'm um, going to. Or like they have, if there's, if there's a specific need, they need that money for, and they're not negotiating because this is, I know I have to walk away with this. That's where you, you get in so much trouble, right? Because- yep. You're not, I had this a house in town. I showed it in my investor and client. This is about a couple of years ago. Oh my God, this house is not worth what it was, what they were asking. And, and I said something to the listing agent. I said, you know, look, they're, they're interested, but you know, they feel it's worth this amount. And she was like, yeah, I know. I agree with you. Um, but the problem is the woman, it was an elderly lady that was living there and the kids were helping sell in the house. And the kids said, we need X amount of dollars to help pay for the nursing home. It doesn't work like that. Nope. It's not a bank. Your house nope. is not a bank, right? People I, don't understand that the sellers have zero control of the value of their house. Right. Zero. Exactly. Zero, zero, zero. The yep. people that determine the value are the people with the money. With money. And, and yep. the minute that a seller understands that, then you've got, you're on the right track, but a lot of sellers, not all, a lot no. of sellers are, 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 are level-minded, you know, level-headed, yep. but it's like, it's the buyers don't give a crap what you need the money for. No, they don't. They, they don't. don't care. No, they don't it's care. Not, like, oh, y'all, I'll help pay for your nursing home. Like, no, no. no.
It has no bearing whatsoever. Like, uh, I don't think, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know what, Jackie, you know what, Jackie, I need, I really need $1.5 million for my house. Will you buy my house for $1.5 oh, million? Yeah, sure. It'll probably only sell for like 600, but will you pay 1.5? Oh, that would be yeah, really because great. if I need money for my retirement, is that yeah. okay? That's what you need, Jen. I got I you really covered. Need. I think yeah. that, I think that's fair. I'd happily overpay for your house. Like, yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on Jen. Come oh on. Oh my God. But, um, yeah, but it's just, you know what? I would say, okay, so this is a, uh, I'm going to do a PSA for those who are listening. Okay. If you're, if you're a home seller and your agent is not educating Sorry. you, is that a dog again? It's my dog. Jackie Baker. Sorry. Come Sorry. On. Call you dogs. Come on now. But if you're, if, if somebody is, interviewing a seller as an agent. Yeah. And that agent is not asking them how much do you owe? Is there any special circumstances? Yada 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 and then in response is not providing information on everything we just said. Is not I'm not educating you. Now you as a home seller may not even be like well, that's great, but I want to do this. But if that agent isn't at least trying to educate, because I'll be honest, if I'm working with a home seller that on a, you know, I, I just met this person and I ask all these questions and out of the gate, if they tell me what the house is worth, yeah, I politely say I'm not the agent for them. Right. Because I can't, I can't represent somebody when that's being unreasonable. Me too. I can't. So I will walk, I will, I will gladly say there's plenty of other fish in the sea. Yeah, I will. You know, have a nice day. Good luck. And but my no, and that's no joke. Like you know, just because. But an agent, you know, of course I'll try to educate them. But if there's there's because sometimes it's just miscommunication. Sometimes sellers just don't like they don't do this stuff day in day out. They have no idea how it works. No, that's no. our job. They, that's our job to educate, right? They, yes. And 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 if an agent isn't trying to explain to a seller, like, okay, so I, I understand that's how you feel, but this is actually how it works. And this is how buyers determine the price based on the value and, and comparable properties and yada yada. You know, this is what the buyers look at from their point. If you if they don't try to do that, you need to find another agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like exactly. Because because let's be honest, the house that you were looking at with your client, with your investor client. Yeah. I mean, shame on that agent for working with those people. Exactly. Taking that listing. That's a, what that's, that's some, that's, get, that's take a listing at any price. That's what I call yep. those agents. So we took a listing at any price. We don't care. So, we don't care. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good. So I'm glad, I'm glad we solved that problem, John. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? We're solving the world's problems. One yeah. Reddit story at a time. That's what we're if here. If only for. it were that easy, Jackie. That's what we're you know here. what? If, if the, the powers that be would just let, Jen and Jackie, you know, <laughs> take a little chart, take a little control and just, and just talk, you know, yeah. Run the show for just a little bit. You yep. know, we might just have world peace. Yeah. I think you're right. Maybe we could do so much. We could together. do, so, we like, could do so much together. Oh, oh, we could do so much together. Jackie. We can't do so much <laughs> arm in arm. Like one of those, this was that, like that, that I can, I can pick, I can't remember the name of it. It's like the friends bus or something. It's like, remember that like years ago, it was like a bus that traveled all over the country. It was like back in like oh, the 80s or yeah. something. And yes. it was like, all they did was like sing and be happy and spread cheer yeah. and love. That'd and be, all. that's us. That's um, going to be, yeah. what was that? Well, that, what were they called? They were called like the, the friends bus or the love bus or the love yeah. friends. Or I don't know. I'm going to think about it. Anyway. And if somebody who's listening to this knows what the hell my crazy brain is thinking of, <laughs> please, please post it. Please, okay. please, please, please write that in the comments. Cause okay. uh, it'll come to me probably 2 a.m. All right. Um, okay. So we got <laughs> another one. So, all right. So Jen, do, could you do me a favor? You are going to have to edit this part out. Can you lower your volume a little bit? Because I think you hit your keyboard. And the volume's like all the way up. <laughs> Whoa. Because <laughs> I saw it go up on the screen. I'm like, really? Turn the volume up. Yeah. Do you see it? Uh, like, go crazy. look on your keyboard. Look on your key. Do you, do you adjust it on your keyboard, the volume? No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm how did your volume go though. up so high? I didn't check. I didn't change anything. I didn't I either. What like my, I think Jackie, I think that earthquake got to you. <laughs> I think I'm not editing this out. This is, this is like, this is, we're live. We're doing this live people. Get we're going to do this live. And you know what? And for those watching, 
if it's crazy, like all, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to change one setting in here, but if it's crazy, uh, I apologize. It's okay. I'm gonna, it's I'm all gonna, good. Here. How's that better? No, it's still loud. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe you just got like, uh, something <laughs> on your ears, man. I don't know. You, 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 no, you it's like, a little it's wacky. Like, you're like wacky, echoing. wacky Jackie. You're, you're echoing in my great room here. <laughs> really? It's so loud. I, I haven't touched anything. I, it's honestly, weird. I, so, oh, the, go ahead. so the Mac, the little Mac volume um, thing icon is on my screen right now on my Mac. I'm like, why? I'm like, and I'm well, that's a you. That's a, that sounds like a you no, issue. No, is it? It can't be. Then how it's the heck does that happen? All right. Anyways. Okay, fine. Sorry, everyone. We got a little technical difficulty. You know right. what? We're like two middle-aged women. We are. We're trying. We are like just, just chatting and we're not, we're not techies, although I, I love the tech, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. We're it's listening. We're trying. we're trying. Anyways. Back, back to the show. Wait, hold on. Hold on. You got your, you got your ready. You got your next. Uh, you know what's okay. This is really weird. I'm trying to adjust the volume and it keeps, I go, when I bring it lower, it goes all the way back up. Yeah. That sounds like a, that's, that, that's, you know what? I think that those people from the first story have <laughs> like, I, so, so listen, so no, the I guy. vacationed in uh, Gettysburg. You ever been to Gettysburg in Pennsylvania? Yes, I have. I've been With there. The, okay. So this was yep. years ago. This is like over 10 years ago. We rented an RV and we, and we went down as a family and stayed like in this campground, this KOA that like is right next to where the battlefields are. Yeah. And my ex-husband was like, all, all loves that ghost. He watched the ghost hunters and, and all that stuff. Okay. I get freaked out super easy. So like, you know, he, he went on his own to like, they had like a tour thing uh, at, at this house um, in downtown Gettysburg. It was a, a woman that housed like soldiers and hid soldiers and stuff like that. And it's like a well-known ghost sightings place and he actually has pictures he was on the second floor right he was on the second yeah. floor and no joke like and we're talking like over 10 years ago so hello iphone technology not great he you can actually see the image of a face on the second floor peeking in from the outside wow freaking scary well anyways we're uh we're like at the campground one night and they do like these stories, like everybody gets, you know, together in the campground, met a lot of nice people. And, and, uh, these representatives from, from, from the, um, uh, you know, from, from, from the historic society, whatnot, come and do these stories. And cause it was a river that ran right through the campground. There was all kinds of stories about this bloody river and all this stuff. And, uh, so they were talking and telling us about how, um, how ghosts will attach themselves to people. And what will happen is you go into a place and if there is a apparition, whatever, that they very well could attach themselves to the human person. And then when you leave, they like you take them home. And that freaks me the hell out. So oh, no, I'm in the camp so fast. So I, I finished the thing yeah. and I go back, we go back to the RV and stuff like that. And, uh, and, and we're, we're, we're sitting in the RV, it's dark and stuff like that. And I start hearing like uh, cannon sounds, right? Ooh. And I'm like, cannon? I'm like, oh, it must be doing like, because it was the 50th anniversary when we were there. 500th, 50th anniversary? 500th anniversary. I don't even know. 100th anniversary? I, I'm not good with my history, Jackie. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not either. Whatever it was. And yeah. so <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was an anniversary. And so I'm like, oh, I must be connected, whatever. So. Yeah. I'm hearing these cannon sounds, you know, throughout, you know, throughout the night. And so the next day we do like a self-guided tour through the battlegrounds. They give you like a CD and we just drive and, 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 and we're, we're driving through. And then I see like one of those real life reenactments. I'm like, Oh, let's stop. Let's stop. And we start yeah. talking. That's so cool. And so I asked him like, Hey, you know, you know, what was going on with the cannons and stuff like that. And uh, last night and the woman looked at me. And she said this with like a, like a Southern draw. And she's like, ma'am, it is against federal law to fire cannons after sundown in state parks. There is no way anyone ever fired a cannon. That is not what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
Oh, I, like freaking goosebumps. I'm like, holy crap. Who fired your cannons, Jen? <laughs> uh, she, she's, and she said, she's like, if you heard something, oh, that was, God. that was, I mean, that, I mean, Gettysburg is one of the most haunted. Oh yeah. Out of grounds, hands down. So yeah. honest to God, Jackie, the entire time I was there, I'm like, I think I was convinced when I came home, we come home from our trip and I'd hear a creaking in my house. I'm like, I'm con I was convinced that we brought a ghost home. You brought a ghost. I was convinced that somebody, an apparition followed us home and oh. like weird crap was going to start happening. So maybe somehow something followed you home and is inhabiting your keyboard and your Thank computer you. and play with your, with your volume. Probably. And here I'm blaming you. I'm like, what did you do? It's so hard. <laughs> I, I was sitting here drinking my tea. Okay. Anyhow. Okay. I'm sorry. Next story. We got it's another good, good one. It is good. It's got all another. good. It's all good in the hood. It's all good in the hood, my friend. All this is so this is another seller related story. God, what's up with the sellers? Don't they know it's a seller's market? Stop like, you know. Oh, don't get me take started. Your money, take your money, <laughs> take your money and run. Okay, here we go. Closing today. Went to final walkthrough this morning. Seller was still living in the house. Yeah. Oh, joy. Love this. Okay. This is my first time buying a house. It was supposed to be empty and broom clean. The seller said they were planning on moving out over the weekend and didn't know anything about the walkthrough. They were signing the papers later today. We pushed the closing to Monday morning. What should I do from here? Update. Now, apparently this got a lot of comments where people, <laughs> people were just like, uh, no, you know, get them. <laughs> they need to get out. Um, but it says here, update. My wife and I have read all the comments. I'm still waiting on the addendum from the title company, but it seems the issue was on the selling agent. He was not communicating with his seller, but we're all going to be there Monday for the walkthrough and then the closing. My wife liked the one person who suggested that we creep by the house to check to see if they're moving. So we will. I'll update again on Monday after the closing. So I would totally do that. I would totally go drive by the house to make sure they're moving out. Uh, I, if, my, if, my, if my clients didn't, I would do. You know what? <laughs> just this. this let's walk them. You know what? I am. I am going to now. Uh, again, we don't know anything about the seller agent yep. situation or yep. what the seller said or didn't say, and maybe they did, and the seller didn't hear or whatever, whatever. But you know as well as I do that there are plenty of agents that do not <laughs> communicate yeah. the process. Yep. To their, yep. to their agent. So if that's the case, like it's not the seller's fault. Like in some States you have, I think it's in California. You have like three days to get out or something like that. Or like a three day vacancy or there's, I think it's in California where you don't have to be out on the date of the closing. Oh no, you do in Jersey. Unless, unless in, you in do Massachusetts, it. you do. Yeah. You have to be what out there unless you have a use in occupancy and you're letting the seller stay for an extended period of time. But, but, no. uh, but I think others, there are States that don't require that. So yep. you don't know what the, what the seller's history is on this and whether that was what yep. they would assumed or whatever. And, yep. and maybe the agent didn't say what the, what the, the process was. They didn't read or, or not only say, but like <laughs> I mean, sellers, buyers and sellers, they have a crap ton on their mind. Yeah. Like, moving out, moving, whether you're moving out or moving in, it's a lot to think about. Like, how many times have you like repeated yourself over and over and over and over? I, I, right, up until closing, I'm constantly in contact with my sellers. Like Bro okay, broken record, right? Like, yeah. Broken. Like, where are you? Are you clean? Are, is the house cleaned out? Did you have the utilities? Did you schedule the utility, yep. the utility shut off to change? You know, what did you do? You know, all this, all the things like, like the weeks leading up to that day to make sure that everything is going to be run smoothly. <laughs> because the thing is, is if a seller miscommunicates, like doesn't understand. Yeah. Yes. The, the buyer is stressed, but hello, the seller, if they are, unless they're doing this intentionally, the seller's just as stressed because they're like, Oh my God, I was supposed to be out. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, my movers aren't coming until the next day after or whatever, whatever. And now they're scrambling too. And it's like, they're not like, they're not always the bad guy, no. you know? You're right. And, you're right. Uh, right. But it comes it's, back it's, to the agent. The, the, it's the, the real estate agent. damn agent. The damn agents. They telling you, Jackie, again, if they would just let us be in charge, we'd like shake out all the nonsense 
Life, life <laughs> in would, our industry. Life you know what I think? Work. Can I tell you something? I think it should be a heck of a lot harder to get your real estate license. I agree with you. I think it is too flipping easy. Somebody decides on a Friday, I want to be a real estate agent. They could be licensed by Monday. It's freaking sad and well, it's scary. Not so much here in Jersey. You have to go for a 75 hour course. Well, and I mean, it, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating, but there, but the thing is, is those courses are online. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's like, it's yeah. not like when, you know, even when I got my license, I mean, now we're talking 1996 by four, like we didn't even have a flipping computer in the office that I went to. Like it was a fax machine, literally mm -hmm. like facsimile machine. And that was it. Yep. So in that case, I had to go physically sit in a classroom and then I had to drive to a office in Boston to physically sit and take a test. Yep. Now you take your courses online. Yep. You can take the, I, be, I, I believe you take your test online. Mm -hmm. Like it just is too flipping easy. It should be more like a, like a plumber where you do like apprenticeship. Well, Maybe like you cannot represent clients for at least six months and you have to log hours of shadowing and yes. all this stuff. Like work, work under somebody. Absolutely. Yes. Get, a men get a mentor for, at a million Because, percent. you know, especially when you're talking like either families that have like a, they're trying to sell their mother's house and maybe they don't know anybody in the area or you have an elderly person or a first time seller who doesn't really know. And then they're like, oh, my, my aunt is an agent or my, my sister's friend yeah. is an agent and maybe they've had their license for six months and they're like, Oh, well I know this person. So I'll use them. And they have no clue that this person has no clue what to do, what they're doing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Oh, I know. But you know, you know what kills me with the real estate exam? Do you remember learning about meets and bounds that mm -hmm. always stuck in my don't ask me what, how that, how, what meets and bounds are about now, but you know what, let me, uh, you know, let's talk about the, the real estate contract. You know what I mean? That's even that, like when we did that in real estate school, like, yeah, we went through that in detail, but they also taught you all this other nonsense, like meets and bounds. Like going to high school, like going right. to high school right? and, and, then, and getting taught all this crap that you'll probably never use again, never, but it's not about use it. No, it, no, but it's, it's not about the crap that you learn, it's about the process of learning and, yes. and observing and yes. problem solving and yes. time management and communication and how to write a paper. And it's the same damn thing in real estate. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you know, having a, being a good communicator to tell them that, Hey, you need to be out on the date of closing. And yes, Mr. Sell, you probably should move out the day before, yes. two days before, so that the house, you have time to clean up and, and, you know, make it all nice and spick and span before the people move in. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It just drives me bonkers. It's just, you know I what? Know. Forget this stupid lawsuit that is making it so, I had a, I had a, a Zoom meeting with a new client uh, today that um, connected with me on YouTube and, you know, talking to them about what their responsibility is as a buyer. Mm -hmm. It's just it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. This mm -hmm. whole thing, it's like, this isn't improving our industry. I mean, yes, I think there's going to be yeah. certain elements that are going to make it better because yep. in order to correctly convey this, like there's a, there's this awareness in the, in the, in, in across the country now, which is what the industry I think is going to be a good thing. But yeah. like, how about we, I don't think that the, the, the actual change I think was not what we needed. I think forcing people to have more education you know, and, and, and more, you know, apprenticeship and, yes. and, and whatnot. Like that's the people, the agents that are the, the, there's the uneducated one. And then there's, well, then there's the sleazy ones that do it intentionally. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. It's sales, you I know, know. I, I know, you can't get away from that. Like it is what it is. Right. But yep. I don't know. Yep. No, I agree with you. I think the apprenticeship, like that's, that really, um, that really strikes me because, I think that should become a requirement. So you do, so you sit for the course, you pass the exam, but then you have to achieve, like accomplish like X amount of hours working in it, yep. working under an agent and really understanding the ethics part of it, right? 
like and work with like and maybe like have agents become like those mentors like get certified or something to be like a certified like new agent mentor or whatever and it's got to be I, some higher bar you know what i think jackie i think you me. and i should take over the national association of realtors <laughs> screw those people you're like you know what yeah. step look, aside look step out no you clowns step yep. aside Bakers let us, let us. are taking over. That's it. We're just, we're going to take, we're gonna clean, clean in house. We're in charge. This is what you we're You know, doing. and just yep. be like, you know what? Let me tell you something. Because <laughs> Jackie Bacon knows people. I know. She lots knows of people, people down in Jersey. I don't, know lots of people. Don't, don't mess with her. Do she, not. She knows people that know people, <laughs> if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. You don't want to mess. You don't want to mess with Jackie Bacon. About that, Jen, but. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, uh, it, so is there any, uh, follow-up comments about like the outcome um, on that? That one, um, not really. Um, uh, one person did have a comment. They had to share, they shared their story and it's, again, it goes back to the agent it's not communicating. So this guy wrote my first house, the dummy sellers did this. They and their agent were just clueless we went to do a walkthrough a few hours before closing and they still had a lot of stuff in there and it was not anywhere near broom clean. And the sellers are apologetic and said, we'll make sure everything's, everything's clean after closing. My agent was like, dude, at closing, you hand over the keys and this house belongs to them. You don't come in here anymore. You never asked for our rent back or anything. Jerk. The seller. Yeah, that was a little rude. The seller's agent just acted clueless. They made it to closing slightly late. Our realtor confirmed that they got all the stuff out, but it was not super clean. Not horrible, but not clean. The seller was apologetic that it was not more clean. We spent their first night scrubbing that place. I almost felt bad for the seller that their agent had not properly explained what was happening. Then they felt they felt bad for leaving a mess. Why? Wh how did the agent not know to do this? So again, the agent so, knew. This the is agent, why the agent knew. You, they, they did, but you know what? This is why we need like a, the apprenticeship hours. You need to have so many hours before you can go out on your own, you know, uh, or, but I mean, there, there you go. It is. That's true. Yep. But the other thing is, is like sleazy is sleazy. It is. And lazy is lazy. And apprenticeship, yep. like that's not going to mean anything if, if that's not going to stop, you know, if a person's sleazy, then they don't care. They're not going to care anymore mm -hmm. after the apprenticeship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's all hearsay, all the things. And, and you're like, you know, you don't know who to believe because one side of the story. But I mean, I've totally dealt with agents like that. You mm -hmm. know, I've yeah. totally dealt with agents where I do like most of the work yeah. because they just want their check. They yeah. are the, this Fair. is, this is, they're the epitome of like, why, <laughs> why the general public can't stand agents. Can't stand <laughs> agents. Right. They're the ones who give agents a bad name. Totally. It's totally. like, you know, it, 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 you know, I'm not going to lie, Jackie. I am not going to lie. I, I do enjoy, um, legitimately enjoy like the process of helping people. Like I have, okay. I have this couple that I start working with and they're like, they have a goal. They want to go from point A to point B. Yep. They want their 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 son, who's got some special needs, to be in a better place. And that's and it's like it. This I'm like okay. I'm I'm already invested in. Like I want them. I want this for them. Yes. I want this for them. Yeah. Same. And yep. What taints the process for me personally? It's not the buyer doing something or. Most of the time, I'm going to say, most of the time, it's not the on the buyer side. It's on the flipping agents. It is. Dealing with these, these people that are lazy. Now, there are, and to be clear, there are a lot of good agents out there, right? There are a lot of people like that give a crap. And there are a lot of, they yeah. do their job and they're educated and they care and they're, they're detailed and all the things. Mm -hmm. But it's like bad apple, man. Yeah, one bad apple, and and <laughs> but like unfortunately, I, I there's a lot, a lot of them in the last couple of years. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, uh, I was I was talking to a colleague of mine today, and, and she was sharing with me a, a deal she's she's dealing with right now, and the agent on the other end is just she goes she goes this her actions are the reason why this lawsuit happened, 
And like, she's living it right now. And like, we just went through all this and like, she's just, she's trying to play games. And it's like, what? Why, 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 why? You know what the sad part is, Jackie? I think, I truly, truly do think that a, an agent that has done the work, they've gone through education, they're staying current on what is, you know, what the current trends are, what the current education is, what the, ch- the current uh, strategies for selling, strategies for buying, all this stuff. There's value there. Mm-hmm. And I really do think that a, an average seller or buyer benefits Mm -hmm. from a, from the expertise of somebody like that to guide them. And I think it puts more money in their pocket. Yeah. The problem is, is that because our industry has been tainted so much that people are going to start second guessing that. And they're like, I don't think I, I don't, why, why should I give them all that money? And if I'm, if this is the kind of experience I'm going to have, I'm going to save the money. Now that's not the end of the story because, okay, the commission is one component. Like, now they're going to negotiate themselves. They're yeah. going to price it themselves. They're going to stage it themselves. They're going to negotiate with the buyer themselves. And they're doing one house. Maybe it's a seller that's sold a couple properties. I have represented over, I think it's over 800 families. I have wow. 800 cases to pull from for experience. Wow. Chances are when somebody comes to me, I've heard it before. So I can pull from my experience on a previous you know, a circumstance and be like, this is what I advise you do in this situation because I've seen it. Yeah. But a seller who's only been doing this a couple of times, they don't, they don't, they think they know, Mm -hmm. but they don't. And it ends up, they don't realize that they think they're saving money, but in the long run, they're actually hurting themselves. And, and, and who's to blame our industry. Yep. Yep. We're we're the ones that are hurting the consumers because the consumers are going to think that they can do it on their own in reality, that they we just they're, they're I just hope I hope that this whole thing just it, 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 we need to raise the bar, but I hope that it's just a better demonstration. Like I really want to see agents step up, yes. and like really do the thing that we're supposed to be doing, and provide freaking value. Exactly. That's that's what it's all about, and I think this is going to weed out. I think a lot of people have already left the industry. A lot of realtors left now that this, um, it's so funny story. I was down in Delaware checking on our rental properties and I went to this uh, community where we we have one of our properties. Um, and, uh, I went to the, um, the sales, the sales office because they're building more homes. I was just curious, wanted to look at a model home and the sales agent, uh, used to be a realtor and he just was hired by Lenar. And, you know, so my friend and I were like, oh, how do you like working for Lenore? He goes, best thing I could ever done. He goes, I wanted to get out as soon as the lawsuit stuff happened. He goes, I wanted to get out. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. And cause he didn't believe in, uh, he didn't feel right about doing the buyer, the, the buyer agency agreement. He goes, why am I going to make somebody sign that? He goes, I don't, I don't, I don't feel, I don't want to have people say you have to work with me. And I'm like, all right, but then they don't have to. You you have them sign it to protect you. But at the end of the day, if the relationship's not working, you tear it up. You know what I yeah. mean? You can cancel yeah. the contract. Like yep. it's also protecting. I think it's also holding. Like it. It. I think there's value with the with the consumer as well because now the the agent has accountability. It's mm-hmm. like okay, I hired you. I hired you. Right. You said you were going to do boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And you haven't. Yeah. So the agent, the seller, the the buyer, the seller, could they could go after the agent. Uh, hello, this is exactly what they did. Yeah. Yep. If there was no seller contracts. Yep. We would not have a lawsuit. So the, the contracts protect both parties. I mean, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a document to protect the agents so that yes, when at the end of the day, we do all these hours and hours and hours, we have, Mortgages to pay too. Mm-hmm. This is our livelihood, mm-hmm. but it goes both ways, right? Mm-hmm. It's an accountability for us to them, and yeah. so I think that there's like I don't know. I, I I've been doing buyer contracts since they came into Massachusetts. I mean, you've been doing them a long time, right? Do no, guys- we, we're not. It's not a big thing down here in Jersey. No, no, no. no kidding. No, a lot of people, a lot of agents. So I, I'm personally, I don't. I haven't done it. Now I have to. Interesting. Now, now the New Jersey Association of Realtors are requiring us to get the, to sign the agreements, but no, no, it's not, I don't think it's a big deal. 
I don't think it's a big deal either. I don't think that's I a big know. deal. The contract's I, not a big deal. You it's know like, what? I think the guy, I think the guy was just like spooked by the whole thing. And I mean, he was in, he's been in real estate. He said he entered the business in 2016, a year after I did. So he's been in it eight years. Okay. So case in point, if he's, yeah. if he doesn't feel good about doing that, let's re let's, let's, let's look at that from another angle. If he doesn't feel comfortable in signing a contract, that means deep down, he doesn't feel confident in his ability to represent the buyer, which means yes. he should probably not be resent, re representing buyers to begin with, which means he needs more training. Yeah. He needs more training before even dealing with buyers. Mm -hmm. He should not be out. He should not be out practicing real estate. He should be getting more training. If he's, if he's uncomfortable, if anybody's any agent's uncomfortable, you need more training. More training. Period. Yeah. You can't be doing that. It's wow. like, you know, oh, will my dentist do a heart transplant? No, <laughs> but I'll figure it out. I got chat GPT. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Right. Thank God. God for works. Thank God for chat GPT. Right. I chat GPT, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to save the world. I, yeah. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Cause no, the chat Jen, GPT, that scares, that stuff world. scares me. The whole AI thing kind of that, that, that stuff like is getting a little, uh, it is a little crazy and it's not, only the tip of the iceberg. I know. I know. It is a little scary. Not it's going to be like, you know, people, people will reach out to you and there'll be like a virtual Jackie and it'll look like you and it'll sound like you. And you'll be like, no. hi, thanks for checking in with me. And I'll mm. be with you in a few minutes. No, no. it's coming. Okay. It, yeah. it maybe maybe not by the time we retire. Probably yes. When the by the things, the way the speed at which things are moving, I I think it's going to be here a lot sooner than when we nope. re retire from this business. Oh, hundred and ten percent. Totally, hundred ten percent. Anyway, so well, we're we're at an hour, my friend. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I got I got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. I got to go save. Let's go save the world, Jackie. We got to go save the world, Jen. We have like. Let me put my cape on. Hey, I got my. I got my mug for this. I love, this is I a podcast. That. I have a my one of my favorite Wonder Woman mugs. I love that mug. It's, it's, it's so me. big. It's huge. It's ginormous, and I love it. Love and, it. Uh, it makes me feel empowered. You know. Well, as it should. It so, should. There you All go. right. This is what we're here for. Yes. Yeah, so Jen, well, till, next, till next time. Yeah, and those tuning in, if you've uh, if you've hung in all this time, like. Bravo. Thank yes. you for watching. Thank you for listening. Yes. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast, we have a YouTube channel and yeah. we have this broadcast on YouTube. So if you want to, if you want to look at our mugs <laughs> and, and I'm not talking tea, I'm talking like, yeah. If you want to see your actual faces and see what we look like, see that, see that we are real people. Yeah. Are real people. If you want to watch us, if you prefer to watch us on YouTube, uh, the, the channel is exactly what the podcast is. Reddit real estate disasters. Yeah. Uh, come on by. Cool. Come on by, leave a comment yeah. and all the things and enjoy. And uh, Jackie, I'll see you next week. See you for, next for, time, for Jen. some more hot adventures. Yes. And, I'm uh, yeah. Sure we'll get more. Awesome. All right. See Thanks you later, everyone. Have care. a great week. Bye. Peace.